In this lesson, I'll be showing you some advanced layer mask painting techniques. Up to this point, we've been using either a white or a black paintbrush set at 100% opacity to paint on the mask. Now I'm going to show you how to use varying opacities to create a cumulative effect which gives you a much more precise and organic mask. For this exercise, I'll be using an image of my dog Wyatt. It was photographed with a wide angle lens which gives it a fairly deep depth of field, although there is some blurring once you get past his head and down through his body. What I want to do is simulate a more shallow depth of field, and of course I'll be doing that with a layer mask. The first thing that I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer, and I'm going to call this layer Blur. And I'm going to run the Lens Blur filter on it. And if you have a prior version of Photoshop and don't have the Lens Blur filter, you can simply use the Gaussian Blur filter. Now that my blurred layer is blurred, I'm going to create a layer mask on the layer, but before I start editing the mask, I'm going to create an image map, and this will help me visualize and map out a strategy for editing the mask, and it's a great tool to use when working with complex masks. To create an image map, I'm simply going to create a new layer, and I'm going to select a color, which blue is fine, and I'm going to select this little bit smaller paintbrush, so I'm going to tap the left bracket key until I get the size I want. And basically what I'm looking for here is the varying degrees of blur. So on Wyatt's face, I don't want any of the blurred layer to show. I want it to be absolutely 100% in focus. So I'm just going to sort of paint around the face here to indicate that this is where I want to mask out the blur layer 100%. Now for the ears and neck, I want the blur layer to be masked out at about 50%. So in other words, I want it to show at 50% opacity. For the chest and I guess top of the legs here, I want the blur layer to show at 70%, or in other words, I want it to be masked out at 30%. So for the rest of the body and the foreground and background, I want the blur layer to be completely revealed, so there won't be any masking at all on it, except for perhaps these arms here of this chair, because they're really kind of at about the same height as the chest so I'll probably mask them out at about 30 percent. So now I've got a pretty good roadmap for editing my mask and I can hide this if I want to or I can use it for reference and bring it up while I'm editing. I now want to begin editing the mask so I'm going to click on the layer mask thumbnail so that it's selected and I want to make sure that the paintbrush tool is selected which it is and I want to paint with black since I want to mask out this blurred layer and I want to use a larger paintbrush, so I'm going to hit the right bracket key a few times to get to the size that I want, right about, right about there. And you can see my opacity is set at 100%, and this is what we've been using up to this point. But for this lesson, I want to start off using 50%, so if I just hit the 5 key on the keyboard, it automatically takes me to 50%. I'm now ready to start painting, but I think I'm going to hide this image map so I can see the edges better. Now I'm going to start painting and remember once again that I'm painting at 50% opacity on the face here and on the neck. And the ears too. Now if we take a look at the layer mask we can see that the area that I've painted is this nice middle gray color which corresponds to the 50% opacity that we painted there. So we'll switch it back. Now just for reference I'm going to go ahead and bring up the image map and remember that we wanted the face painted at 100% opacity and the neck and ear painted at 50%. Now because we're painting with a 50% opacity brush the ear and neck are good. However we still need to do some work on the face. I'm going to go ahead and hide the image map again and still using a 50% opacity brush, start painting over the face again. And this time I'm not going to paint on the ear or the neck. Okay, now let's take a look at our layer mask. You can see that the area of the mask that corresponds with the face is now darker. That's because when you paint with an opacity less than 100%, the effect is cumulative. However, this is where it gets tricky because although it may seem that painting the same area twice with a black brush at 50% opacity would result in an area that's 100% black, 
After all, 50 plus 50 equals 100. That's not quite how it works. With the first pass, I was painting at 50% opacity on solid white, which gave me the middle gray color. However, on the next pass, I was painting at 50% opacity on the middle gray color. In other words, it was 50% of 50%, which is 25%. So the resulting color is somewhere around 75% black, and I say somewhere because it's not quite 75% black, but it's close enough to work with. Now after four or five passes, I'll finally reach 100% black on the mask. What this does is it gives me the ability to layer the opacity and create a much more natural effect. I'm going to switch back to layer view now and continue painting on the dog's face, concentrating mainly on the eyes, the nose, and the mouth as I build the black on this mask. I'm going to make several more passes here as I build up to 100% black. Okay, I think that should do it. Okay, let's go ahead and bring up the image map here. And we've got our 100% here, 50% here, and 30% here. So I'm going to hide that once again. And I'm going to hit the 3 key on the keyboard to drop my brush opacity down to 30%. And I'm going to come in here on the chest uh, area and the top of the legs and start painting at 30%. And I'm just going to make one pass through here. just like that. And while I'm here, I'm going to drop the brush size down a little bit and go over the tops of the arms of this chair just one time here. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it does make a little bit. Okay. So let's take a look at the layer mask now. You can see the area of the face that's been painted at 100% opacity and that blends into 75% opacity, blends into 50%, blends into 30%. So looking at this from another direction, this blur layer is completely hidden in the face. And it's revealed here uh, in around the ears and the top of the neck at 25%. Uh, when you get down to the neck, it's revealed at 50%. And as you go lower into the chest and lower body, it's revealed at 70%. And then the rest of the image, except for the uh, arms of the chair, it's revealed completely. Now I want to show you something here and what I'm going to do is simulate missing a spot on this mask. So I'm going to change my brush opacity to 100%, switch my color to white, and I'm just going to paint a streak right here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just pretending that as I was painting this mask I missed this spot. Now switching over to the layer view, it's hard to tell exactly where this spot is. So I'm going to switch back to the large mask view and try fixing it by painting on the mask here. To do this, I'm going to switch my brush opacity back to 30%, and I'm going to switch back to a black paintbrush. And I'm going to come in here and start filling in this gap. Okay. Now that's not bad, except that on the edges where the brush overlapped what was already currently painted, you can see it got darker, and this is just from the cumulative effect. Now in this image, and let's look back at the layer view, you can see it doesn't really make any difference. You can't tell but on many images it will make a huge difference and you can easily tell that there's a problem. Fortunately there's a very easy way to fix a gap or a problem like this. All you have to do is choose the eyedropper tool and click on the gray color that you're wanting to fill with in this case this 30% uh, gray and then go back to your paintbrush switch it back to 100% opacity and now just paint over the area where the gap was and there you go, now the color is completely uniform. Now let's switch back to layer view. And there you have it, a natural looking blur created by painting on a layer mask at varying opacities. Now at this point in the image I would probably apply some selective sharpening to the head and possibly create a couple of adjustment layers to enhance the image more. But what I really wanted you to understand from this lesson is how to build a mask with varying layers of opacity to create natural looking effects. In the next lesson, I'll be demonstrating the various layer mask menu options and showing you how to convert masks into selections and selections into masks.